Well, I wanted to do this little uh, blip tonight about boost sensors because not all boost sensors are alike, but they all look alike. So uh, they've got part numbers on them. I'm going to show you where the part number is. And then I've got a little uh, chart for you to take a look at so that if you have to replace the boost sensor on your engine, you get the right one. Because if you put the wrong one in, depending which one you put in, you're either going to have a gang of fault codes or you're going to have severe low power. So let's take a look at uh, this little chart with the, the numbers of the sensors and uh, of the fault codes that you can log if you put the wrong one in. So you can see with the green arrows pointing to that red rectangle, that is the part number of the sensor. To see that part number, you have to remove the bolt that holds the sensor in. Uh, sometimes the sensor will be bolted through that hole that's on the right. Sometimes there'll just be a clip over the sensor and they don't have a bolt through that hole. I think they went to the clip because people were over tightening that and cracking the housing and causing uh, failures. Usually when Cummins makes changes like that, it's because um, they're always trying to engineer potential problems out of things, which I think is a good idea myself. So the part number is always going to be seven digits. Um, Cummins parts, modern day parts are all seven digits as of the making of this video anyway. And um, there's three basic sensors. There's the um, barometric or inlet sensor. That's the one on the top and it can measure 13 to 33 inches of mercury and that would go into the uh, intake pipe sometimes between the turbocharger and the air filter and that can measure barometric pressure at key on and then it can measure um, the slight pressure changes in there when the turbo speeds up or slows down. I believe that sensor might also be in some of the very smallest engines that Cummins makes as a boost sensor. Uh, again, if you look up your engine number and go to the parts book, you'll always get the right part. Uh, but if you're fighting a low boost problem and someone else has worked on it and a lot of stuff's been done, pull the sensor out and take a look. You can see the 289-7333, which rolls up to a 492-1322. It can only measure between 13 and 62 inches of mercury. And that sensor goes in engines that are 6.7 liter or bigger. So the B series up to the C series. And then finally, the bottom sensor is any engine that's 8.3 liters or greater which would be your 15 liter um, heavy duty, the ISX-12, ISX-15, and it can measure up to 150 inches of mercury. The fault list that you see on the bottom, if you look those up, they range from a uh, low boost to erratic readings, out of range readings, because if you put the, um, the top sensor into your ISX-15, it's going, to be, it's going to be maxed out before the engine ever starts to work. And the ECM is going to know something's wrong. So you're going to have fault codes. But if you put the um, 492-1324 into a 289-7333, the, the middle engine, the 67, you could end up having a low boost problem because the sensor is not measuring in the normal range that it's supposed to measure in. Remember that the ECM is looking for a voltage range. So signal voltage is between somewhere between one and a half volts and about four and a half volts, 4.3 volts, somewhere in there. And the sensors have to be designed to work in the pressure range that they've got to live in. Thanks for joining me at Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.